Shalom and welcome. Today is June 13th. It has been 251 days since the war against the Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip began. And uh, today it's me, Hanan Leshinsky, and I will try to fill the shoes of Rotem, who uh, is away at the moment. And today I will bring you the news and the stories that Israelis are reading in their native newspapers today. So today we're looking at the Yediot Achronot newspaper, one of the oldest and uh, most traditional newspapers in Israel. And the main headline is Shavuot Tachat Esh, which means Shavuot under fire. Uh, now, the last several days, um, Israelis celebrated Shavuot, of course, uh, all across the country. But in the north, the residents of Israel were Tachat Esh, under fire, as they were celebrating uh, Shavuot, also called the Feast of Weeks, which actually coincides with uh, the biblical, the Christian Pentecost. And uh, we see here a picture of a a mother uh, with her child in her arms uh, being scared during the rocket alarms, uh, which happened just as they were celebrating Shavuot in uh, northern Israel, in uh, Kibbutz Amir, which is one of the many kibbutzim across northern Israel. Now, the other headline here reads, Yoter mi matayim raketot shugru etmol lagalil. This means over 200 rockets were fired yesterday at the Galilee, northern Israel. Tveria nichnesa letvach hayeri. This means that Tiberias, Tveria in Hebrew, uh, entered the range of fire for the first time since the war began. And uh, in other news, we see down here uh, the pictures of four soldiers, the last four soldiers who were killed during the ground invasion uh, in the Gaza Strip. And uh, one of them um, had a diary and uh, wrote uh, his thoughts down actually before he died. And we will delve into this story later as well. Now let's take a look inside. So on the first page, we have a very interesting uh, caricature, which uh, I think very precisely uh, shows, uh, conveys the situation in Israel's north at the moment. We see uh, the leader of Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, ascending steps, and the steps are uh, on the steps are written the towns uh, of northern Israel. So we see Kiryat Shmona, which is um, very close to the Lebanese border, being on fire already and then Tzfat, which is a little bit farther away. We have Nahariya in the Western Galilee. And then uh, he, he is stepping at the moment on Tiberia, Tiberias, which, uh, as we mentioned earlier, for the first time came into range of uh, Hezbollah fire. But then the next steps are uh, towns that are more in central Israel. So uh, the fear is, or, or the trend, uh, which you can say is, that Hezbollah uh, gradually but constantly increases the range of its fire and uh, targets ever more Israeli towns uh, in the north. So we'll go to the next page. So here the main headline is Bikurim Veshigurim, uh, which rhymes in Hebrew and uh, it means that uh, during Shavuot we've had uh, Shigurim, which are rocket launches. And we see in the background here the large wildfires caused by many of those uh, rockets falling in open areas. And even if the rockets get intercepted, sometimes the shrapnel from the interceptor missiles falls under, on the ground and causes uh, fires, even though the rockets were, in, were intercepted. So uh, above we have uh, Israel b'min Hamas, so Israel at war, and Haslama bat Safon, so escalation in the north, Si Bashigurim ve'archavat Tvachayeri. So we had uh, a record of launches, Shigurim again, and uh, the broadening of the fire, range of fire in the north. Um, so down uh, below you can see a, a map, which I think is very important to understand uh, the scope of this problem in the north. Uh, we have different um, symbols showing where uh, rocket alarms were activated. We have a symbol for drone attacks, which were, uh, are rising steadily over the last weeks. And we also have a symbol for fires. So uh, as we said, even though many of the rockets and drones are being intercepted, they're causing fires, large fires, which are uh, destroying, uh, endangering homes and destroying nature reserves in what many Israelis think is the most beautiful part of the country. And uh, we also see that here for the first time, even towns at the southern, uh, at the southern, southern tip of uh, the Sea of Galilee, of the Kineret in Hebrew, have been targeted uh, during the last couple of days. Now on the left side of the page, we have uh, a short article about what uh, caused this latest escalation. Um, so actually, there is a kind of um, 
it's a kind of uh, equation that is going on between Israel and Hezbollah. Israel is doing something, uh, shooting, uh, doing an airstrike, for example. So Hezbollah reacts with a certain uh, pre-planned operation, one could say. So this latest attack of some 200 rockets fired over the last couple of days was caused in, in this equation um, by the elim elimination of the most senior Hezbollah commander to date. So we have a picture here of him uh, actually kissing the head of uh, the Iranian uh, former commander Qasem Soleimani, who was killed a couple of years ago by the US, actually. And uh, he was the foremost uh, commander responsible for the whole Iranian operation across the Middle East. To see this picture of him uh, together with uh, Talib Abdullah, who was this Hezbollah commander who was eliminated uh, yesterday or two days ago, uh, this just shows how senior this commander was, that he uh, was personal friends with Qasem Soleimani, who was uh, really the, the head behind the whole Iranian operation across the Middle East, as I said. So the headline here is Hachisul Shehiftiya at Hezbollah. So the elimination uh, that surprised Hezbollah and caused it to fire all of those rockets at uh, the north. Now, if, by, by the way, if we're saying stuff like that, it's important to remember that, of course, it's not Israel who is causing uh, Hezbollah to fire. Hezbollah started this fire, indiscriminate fire, at civilian areas in Israel on October 8th, uh, as they say, in support of Hamas. Uh, of the Hamas uh, invasion and massacre into Israel. So, as I said, it's a kind of cynical uh, way maybe of looking at this, th those equations, but this is how the war is being fought both by Israel and by Hezbollah in order, in order to uh, not escalate the war into an all-out war. Both sides at the moment are not interested in doing this. So let's continue. So on this page, uh, which unfortunately has become a constant uh, across all Israeli uh, newspapers, the page is titled Hagiburim Shelo Yashuvu, so the heroes who will not return. And uh, this is dedicated to personal stories about the soldiers who died recently. So two days ago, uh, four soldiers died in uh, a booby-trapped building which collapsed on them when they entered um, in Rafah in the southern Gaza Strip. Uh, the first is call, was called uh, Tal Pashbileski, Pasz a good Polish name like my own actually. Um, so we have here uh, that Tal wrote in, in his diary, uh, he wants everyone to know that if he dies, he will die uh, wholeheartedly and he believed wholeheartedly in what he was doing and uh, that he was defending his, his nation and his people. The next one was Almog Shalom, he was only 19. So Almok Shalom and uh, the other 19-year-old Yair Levin, they were still in training actually. They were uh, in Gaza as part of um, their, their training and their course uh, preparation. And uh, they died uh, without even finishing and, and being, uh, finishing their training really. So another tragic detail of this, uh, this incident is that uh, Yair Levin, uh, one of the two 19-year-old soldiers, he's actually uh, the grandchild of former Knesset member Moshe Feiglin. So once again, we can see that uh, Israel's leaders are directly involved. Uh, the son of uh, Gadi Eisenkot, one of the most senior leaders in Israel actually, uh, has also died, as has his nephew. So uh, many tragic stories. And uh, the, the fourth uh, soldier who died here was Eitan Kalsbrun. And uh, so we have four soldiers who died here, several more who were wounded, and uh, may their memory be blessed, uh, who lost their lives in this war. So the last story we're going to bring you is uh, the story of one of the four hostages who were freed uh, just a couple of days ago in a heroic operation. Um, here at the top we see uh, the comrades of Arnon Zamora who died during this operation, they're talking about him, uh, what an amazing guy he was. And uh, down below we have uh, the story of the parents of one of the hostages, Andrei Kozlov. Uh, they actually are living in Russia and they came the day after the operation to meet him. Uh, and of course, uh, here's a family picture, they are very happy of course. And uh, here they're actually giving an interview and uh, giving some of the details about what he told 
what Andrei told his parents has happened uh, during the captivity. So one of the things uh, they are saying is, Amulahim Israel Shachachamikem. So they were told Israel forgot you during the captivity. Now we know that this, is, uh, this isn't so, of course, and uh, we continue to think of all the hostages who haven't returned yet, uh, but the Hamas terrorists were basically brain or are bra brainwashing the hostages to think that we have forgotten about them. And uh, another thing they were saying is, So he, he thought that the IDF uh, came to kill him. This is another thing that he was brainwashed into believing. And uh, so some of the uh, videos released are showing him, uh, are showing Andre being very scared at first when he saw the IDF soldiers coming in. And uh, in an amazing detail, in one of the videos, we see one of the IDF soldiers then uh, fist bumping uh, Almog Meir, giving a fist bump to, to calm him down and to show, hey, we're here to rescue you and we're going to get you out of here. And uh, another thing that Andrei Kozlov's parents uh, said is that Anashim Tsuakim le Andrei Barekhov, so people are shouting to Andrei uh, on the street when they're seeing him now, uh, we're so happy that you returned. And um, this is something that has really united Israel these last days. Uh, as you may know, Israel is a very divided um, country, a very divided society in many aspects. But we were all united in uh, rejoicing when our hostages returned. And we will continue praying and hoping that the rest of the hostages will also return. And uh, this will be a day of great happiness here in Israel. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope we could give you a taste of what Israelis are reading today in their newspapers. And uh, for more details and information, visit us on allisraelnews.com.